Hi there. If you are the one who works on radars, you know how important it is to test them. And the conventional methods such as delay lines cannot meet the demands of today's radar test. At Constantly, we develop sophisticated test solutions for a variety of radars including Pulsed and CW. FMCW is one of the widely used radars finding its applications in radio altimeters, proximity fuses, automotive and early warning radars and so on. In this video, we demonstrate the echo simulation to test the FMCW radars. Let's quickly check how FMCW radar works. A linearly modulated FM chirp signal with either triangular or sawtooth sort of pattern is transmitted by the radar. The echo signal that is bounced off a target is delayed, Doppler shifted and attenuated with respect to the transmitted signal. The reflected signal is mixed with the transmitted signal to produce beat frequencies. The delay and Doppler of the target are estimated from beat frequencies FBU and FBD. Before we start the demonstration, let me explain the hardware setup. Here we have COTS hardware from National Instruments. We have a PXI Express chassis hosting two 6 GHz vector signal transceivers which support an instantaneous bandwidth of up to 1 GHz. Vector signal transceiver is the combination of RF up and down converter and a programmable Vertex 7 FPGA. These VSTs are entirely software defined and can be used for multiple applications. Of the two VSTs, we are using one as a radar and other as an echo simulator. VST1, which is acting as the radar, can generate the FMCW signal with a bandwidth of up to 1 GHz at center frequencies of up to 6 GHz. The signal is fed to VST2, which is acting as the echo simulator. VST2 down converts the signal, processes it with the user defined echo parameters, and sends back to the radar. We have built a radar emulator application running on VST1. The waveform parameters such as center frequency, sweep bandwidth, chirp duration can be configured on the UI. In this demo, we are configuring a chirp bandwidth of 500 MHz, sweeping in 100 microseconds with triangular pattern. There are a number of graphs, the transmitted and received waveforms are plotted with their extracted chirp patterns. You can choose to view any of the plots on the graph. This is the copy of the signal that's being transmitted and its chirp pattern. Below are the graphical representations of estimated delay and Doppler with respect to time. You can see that the received signal and its chirp pattern are noisy as we didn't run our echo simulator yet. Well, this is the application that we built for echo simulator on VST2. You can choose the VST reference, configure the center frequency and run the echo simulator application which supports a wide bandwidth of 1 GHz. There are few options we program to simulate range in Doppler. You can choose to simulate a constant or linearly increasing range with necessary controls. And below you can see the graphical representation of the current range being simulated. We have similar options to control Doppler simulation. Let's go ahead and run this. Now you can see the received signal and its time frequency response. You can also observe time frequency responses of TX and RX signals alone. You can see that the estimated range is matching the simulated value. Let's change the simulation pattern to linear. In the below graphs, you observe that the estimated range and Doppler patterns are very close to the simulated patterns. Now, let's change the range with 1 meter steps and it can be observed that the same is being estimated by the radar emulator. The VST has a round trip delay associated with the A to D and D to A conversions, digital signal conditioning and processing. The round trip delay of VST1 is close to 1.44 microseconds and that of VST2 is 1 microseconds. And that's the reason why we cannot simulate a true minimum delay which is less than 1 microseconds. To simulate and process delays that are less than 1 microseconds, on processing side, we are omitting the first chirp cycle and processing echo from second chirp cycle onwards. Which means the first 100 microseconds of the TX is ignored. This 100 microseconds correspond to 15,000 meters in range and when a range of let's say 15,100 meters is simulated, you can see that the estimated range is 100 meters. In this way, 
The round trip delay of VST can be compensated and delay of as low as 0 microseconds can be simulated. We have seen the radar emulation and echo simulation applications running on VSTs, but VSTs can go only up to 6 GHz. We offer custom up and down converters to extend the frequency range to X, K and KU bands. For this demo, we have built an X-band up-down converter which you can see in this video that has a digital control bus and RF and IF ports. This UDC accepts or outputs IF at 4 GHz and is currently tuned to an RF of 11 GHz. Let's see the up converter first. The center frequency of VST1 is changed to 4 GHz. As you can see, we have connected the output of VST1 to the up converter chain of the UDC and output of UDC is connected to a spectrum analyzer. The output FMCW signal can be observed on the spectrum analyzer at 11 GHz center frequency. This up converted signal, which is at 11 GHz, can be looped back to the down converter and IF can again be observed at 4 GHz on the spectrum analyzer. Now we have both the up and down conversion channels in the transmit chain of the radar emulator. The radar signal that is generated at 4 GHz by VST1 is up converted to 11 GHz and is down converted back to 4 GHz by the UDC. Let's feed this 4 GHz signal to our echo simulator and run the application. You can observe that the performance in estimated range and Doppler is the same with the UDC in the loop. This is a simple and quick demo of our radar test application for FMCW. Our sophisticated solutions include scenario definition with multiple targets, platform dynamics, antenna patterns and so on. To know more, visit constantly.com.